That's some faith right there. He just said, look, I know your power. I ain't, I'm not even disbelieving what you can do. I believe what you can do. He said, say your word. Listen to what, what happened. Go ahead. For I also am a man set on authority. So he said, I'm also a man that's set on authority. Meaning that he runs stuff. Most people got to get in this position of understanding how when you got authority, that's why, that's why a lot of people who run businesses, who, over, who are managers, who are supervisors, they kind of understand this because they're in that position of leadership. But listen to what this interior man said. Go ahead. For I also am a man set up under authority, having under me soldiers. Yes, sir. And I say unto one, go, and he go, mm -hmm. and to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He said, God, I don't understand how your power work. I got people who work under me. When I tell them to do something, they do it. No hesitation. That's how you do it. He said, I understand this. This is what I want you to do. But listen to what Jesus said. Go ahead. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him. Jesus said, wow. Now you make the Lord say, wow. Marvel me like, whoa, look at this cat right here. Go ahead. When, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. He said, I ain't found such great faith in his own people. Not even in Israel. This man just said, say your word. He believed it. Had a grain of mustard seed. Believe it. Say your word. Look what happened. Go ahead. And they that were sent returned to the house, found the servant who whole that had been sick. That's power. He found him whole. He wasn't sick no more. <clears throat> this is the kind of faith that you got to have. This power right here. He said, just send your word, Lord. Just send it. You ain't got to come with me. I don't want to bother you like that. Mm -hmm. But some of us, come on with me. Watch around with him, holding Jesus' head. They need Jesus to come down right now off the throne just to get them some food in the house. Just to get some water. Just to eat what they want to eat. And this man exemplified the faith that God himself had even seen in all of Israel. Just sin it. Sing your word. There's a reason why I'm saying it. When you're talking to God, you tell him to send the word to your problem. Instead of waiting on somebody else to solve your problem. Pray. Keep praying. That's the title of the lesson. Keep praying. Stop trying to, oh, if he do right, if she do right, we'll be okay. No, that ain't it. If you right with God in your personal relationship, that's it. If I'm right with God in my personal relationship, that's it. Period. Let's look at another. Let's go to John chapter 5 and verse 1. We'll show you some diligence. We understanding this. Some of this, this prayer is done out of order. And this is the main reason why us, and you so much us, don't get our prayers answered. Because we're not diligent in seeking it. And it don't come when you want it to come. It comes when it's right on time. When he wants, when God wants it to come. <clears throat> Let's look at a man here who's sick. You see how different he was. John chapter 5 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. After this, after there was a feast of the Jews, after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Yes, sir. Now there is a now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, mm -hmm. having five porches. So it's a pool out there of water. And the pool out there of water is for healing. Go ahead. In in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, mm -hmm. of blind, halt, withered. Waiting for the moving of the water. So the sick came to this pool. Whatever your sickness was, 
whether it was impotent, or you was blind, or you couldn't walk, or, or it's just a problem that you had, that this angel will come down and trouble the walls and heal these people. Go ahead. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Yes, sir. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So you had to be first to get in that pool of water to be, had, to be healed. But there was one man down there who was sick, who couldn't get out of his bed. He was trying to get somebody to do it for him, and they kept jumping over him. Mm. But listen how long he was sick. Go ahead. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. 38 years he was sick. And some of us crying for 6 months or 9 months. Complaining. Or a year. Or 2 years. Complaining. This man had infirmity 38 years. 38. Go ahead. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Would thou be made whole? Jesus said he lied. He knew for a long time. What he said, I know what you need even before you pray, right? Mm -hmm. I know this. What he asked him, he said, would thou be made whole? That's a question. He trying to see what his faith is. If you believe it, you'll be healed. But if you don't believe it, you won't be healed. Go ahead. The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another stepping down before me. So they were stepping over him while he, he had a bed right next to the pool. So he was waiting there all that time so the angel could come down to trouble the trouble water. But people that could move faster than he would, they step on him, get in the pool before he get his head. Mm -hmm. He was dealing with this thing for a long time. He was waiting on it. You got to wait on this. But go ahead. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed. And walk. Go ahead. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Immediately he made him heal. He asked the question, Will you be made whole? He asked us a question like that too. And whatever you're struggling with, do you believe I can I can heal you? I can help you? And some of us can't. We're looking at somebody else to do it, not God. Come on. We're looking at somebody else to help us in this situation. Because God is moving too slow. Don't fake the phone with him now. He told this man he would get down there. He went down there and told him to get up. He didn't have to get wet. He didn't have to get wet. Get up, man. He got up and walk. That's mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Power. You think you weren't praying for this for 38 years? You think he, why do you think he was sitting inside that water all the time? He was hoping he'd get in. Hoping somebody will pick him up and put him in. Go ahead. Verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured. They go us. It, uh, is the, go ahead, oh, go it is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Look at this. The man made whole. Been suffering 30 years. Here goes some other. Look at that. Oh, look at that. He's working on the Sabbath. I used to be like that. I really used to be like that. Oh, you working on the Sabbath? You don't know the situation God got these people in. Come on, bro. It's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. It's lawful. Saturday night, it's not where you can't help nobody on the Sabbath. He talking about working for wages. Amen. If somebody out there needs some help to do something on the Sabbath, you help them. Ain't talking about going to the mall, walking walk around here <laughs> in them shop. Man. Amen. Ain't talking about going to a party and helping them do all this stuff they want to do on their on they flesh. I'm talking about help. That's right. But us, we stand in there. Jews. Look at this man. He cured somebody on the Sabbath day. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. He answered them, He that made he that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. He said, Jesus told me to take up my bed and walk on the Sabbath. Go ahead. Then asked they him. What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? Mm -hmm. And he that was healed. Which not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, 
thou made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come up come un, unto thee. He said, look, now pay close attention to that. He said, look now, sin no more, or this worse thing will come on you now. You understand how to get your healing? Keep that sin out of your life, or a worse thing come on. That's right. Let's look at that. Let's, well, let's see why he said it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 28. Let me show y'all what Jesus said, sin no more, that the worst thing will come upon you. It all dealing with prayer. The connection between God and his people. If you ain't got that right connection, he don't hear nothing that you say. Nothing. Nothing. You cannot live in sin for him to hear you. Pray always. Keep praying. Keep praying. But we learn how to pray. How to move his ears. How to get his power. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. Go ahead. He that turneth away his ear from ear in the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Oh, so it's very important to hear the law. He said, your prayers are abomination. I don't care how much you pray to me. If you're breaking that law, you got sin on you, you have to get it forgiven before I hear you. Amen. Abomination means that he hates it. Exactly. Hates it. Holy Spirit right there. We come back to Holy Spirit. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. Let me show you what it says. We're going right back. All you New Testament readers. Because you got to be telling them what it is so they won't believe you. They think there's something wrong with the law. Ain't nothing wrong with the law. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you don't know God's law, how do you know you sin? How do you know? That's right. That's what people got to understand. You ask them to quote just the ten simple law. It's more than ten. They don't know. How can God hear you when you, you breaking the law? You think you hear from God. Satan me in your prayer. And believe me, he gives good gifts until he kills you or hurts you. Or do something bad to you. That's why God said, don't confuse with great gain or gain with godliness. Just because you get things that good. That ain't the reason why God blessing you. It could be Satan. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 28. I just want to make sure you understand that about this law. You got to understand how to open God's ears. If you don't, you're just wasting time. I'm wasting time. Proverbs 28 9. Go ahead. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. So if you're praying, it's abominable. You can actually need help. You can actually be sick as a dog. You can actually have, be about to die. And God ain't hear nothing you say. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Whoso causes the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in possession. You better be careful who you lead. You better be leading the right way. Because if you ain't leading the people that you got that ear to you, you can fall in the pit. And it will hurt you. God knows how to hurt us when we weep, when we weep at our weakest moment. He knows what we're afraid of. He knows it. And he'll bring that pain. Because you're leading someone wrong. I'm, if I'm leading someone wrong, go ahead. The rich man is wise in his own conceit, mm -hmm. but the poor that has understanding searches himself out, searches him out. Search him out. You got to search the book. Search him out. See if you're doing it right. See if you're doing it correctly. Don't be just doing something. It's just like you. I tell people, it's just like a person going to work. They're going to make sure they search their job out. Why? Because they don't want to get fired. 
But when it comes to the Bible, oh, we just show up. That's it. They go home. Man, hell is on the line. Lake of fire, if you don't understand. You better search this book out. You better search your mind. People don't want to search, but believe me, they will search out everything they both say. Why? Because they want to get paid at the end of the week. I'm going to make sure I cut that client out real good. Because get what? I want him to pay me and come back the next week. But when it comes to the book, okay, it's whatever. Let's go in for a couple of hours and then go home and do what we want to do. And you wonder why you ain't getting what you need. Go ahead. Verse 12. When righteous men do rejoice, there is great glory. Yes, sir. But when the wicked rise, a man is hidden. Go ahead. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. So you cannot cover your sin. Don't be faking the phone like you just didn't lie there. Just say, God, forgive me. I didn't lie. Oh, you stole that? God, forgive me. I just stole that piece of gum out of the store. I ain't really mean to do it. Just be truthful with him. He knows your heart. Yes, Tell him. Yes, yes, yes. Don't cover it up. Do not cover it up. Come clean with it. Go ahead. But whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy. See, that's what I want. Mercy. I believe him. I want mercy. All right, Jeff, instead of sending you to jail for 10 years, I'm going to just have you pay some money back. Mm -mm. That mercy. That mercy. Mm, I don't want to go to jail. I had that experience before. <laughs> it lasted me over 20 some years. Go ahead. 14. Oh, yeah, you know what? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Happy is the man that feareth always. Happy. Mm -hmm. But he that hardens his heart shall fall into mischief. What do you mean saying harden your heart? Your mind. Who do, you, who do you fear? God. You fear his word and what it will do to you. You happy. Because you know, uh-oh, I know I can't do that. But I'm happy. I understand I can't do that. I'm happy about the law. I understand that. Go ahead. As a roaring lion and a, ra a raging bear, mm -hmm. so is a wicked ruler over the poor people. Believe me. When you with these cats today showing us, they rule it over them. They very wicked. Very wicked. If you don't have God in your generation right here, man, you done. I'm done. It's evil all around us. All Excuse around me. us. Evil's all, evil all around us, man. We got to have God helping us through this, walking through this valley of shadow of death. Yes. This is the valley of shadow of death right now. We got to have it. So we got to make sure we got our connection right with prayer. Go ahead. Verse 16. The prince that wanteth understanding is also a great oppressor. Yes, sir. But he that hateth covetousness shall prolong his days. That's wrong right now. Covetousness. We coveting everything. Desiring everything of somebody else's. We coveting. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor things. That's all you think about. Oh, look what she got. Oh, look what he got. I wish I could have this. I wish I mm -hmm. Stop covering You got shoes on, don't you? Be satisfied. You got a shirt on, don't you? Be satisfied. That's right. Let's look at something here. Let's get on to Hebrews chapter 13. Let's look, at, look into this covenant. Just want to make sure we're doing it right. How do we make sure? We're doing what we do now. Read. Read it. Pray it correctly. Understand how God operates. But if a person's mind is so locked up and can't hear the book, may God have mercy on your soul. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 1. Let's look at this covetousness. Because a lot of people are doing this today. Go ahead, brother. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby, uh, for thereby some have entertained angels on the way. He said, don't forget this. Remember when we dealt about the evil spirits, the spirits who were leading you last week? 
Some of us are entertaining angels, but don't even know it. Because that evil angel got their mind. Got their mind. And the closed off what the truth is trying to tell you, all to listen to that evil angel, which is being, which is possessing that person. You better hear the truth and stop being offended. It don't matter what truth come from, what mouth it come out of, you cannot change truth. That's right. As long as that person is saying truth, you deal with the truth, not the person. Mm. Period. Go ahead. Remember them that are in bonds, as bound with them, and them which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. Yes, sir. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Believe me, boy. Whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge them, whoever it is. Go ahead. Let your conversation be without covetousness. He said, let your talk be without what? Covetousness. Stop desiring all this stuff you don't need. You don't need this stuff. I had to really beat myself down. For me, I'm getting my testimony. I don't want a Mercedes Benz. For what? Well, I don't want a big house. For what? Just to say, ooh, look what Jeff got. That's what it was about. Yeah, exactly. All day long. That's it. My truck gave me the same place that Mercedes Benz go. Same thing. But people looking at this thing, they want all this stuff, and they're clouding the connection because they're covering this stuff. He said, let your conversation, I mean, the way you talk, go ahead. Be without covetousness mm -hmm. and be content with such things as ye have. Mm -hmm. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, be content with what you have. If you can afford to say to be in without going in debt and much, have it. That's what you can afford. But most of us can't. That's, right. That's why I did the shutdown message last week. But these people begging the government, open back up, open back up. Why? Because they overextended. They over budgeted. They got so much debt on them, they don't know how to survive. And mainly because they're ashamed. If they lose the house, they lose the car. They're ashamed. You got to be a budgeter in this thing. Especially right now. These last day right here, money going to be hard to come by. If you got this covenant spirit on you, and you're going out there getting all this stuff, believe me, when it hit, God said, all right, now you follow me on the Sabbath, they come. Oh, shit. God, I got to go to work. I got to go pay for this truck. I got to go pay for this house. I got to do all this stuff. And that's what people don't understand. Your life is more important. Let it go. Let it go. It's more important. Go ahead, bro. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my help.